Okay, and we're back. <laughs> Dr. Larry with Brittany Carbone. We're having an outstanding conversation. What were we talking about? Um, <laughs> I'm glad you were paying attention like I was. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about before and after. So Brittany's lost 45 pounds and kept it off for three years. She lives an excellent, healthy lifestyle and had tried numerous uh, short-term diets that never worked until you got into some core issues and we've talked about you know self-love you're mm -hmm. getting kind of getting on a deeper level um, let's talk about what you eat what do you eat now you're training for a marathon yes so like let's just go through breakfast lunch and dinner what's okay. a typical day for you breakfast lunch and dinner um, typically I will have oatmeal like half a cup of oatmeal in the morning and a grapefruit and just depends you know maybe if I'm extra hungry that day I'll have like a tablespoon of almond butter or okay. peanut butter in the morning okay the no sugar added kind okay because they like to add that stuff now why do you eat those things so sounds like <laughs> you got a carb a fruit and maybe some protein yeah I don't know it just works for me okay it keeps me hungry or keeps me full keeps and you hungry <laughs> keeps me really hungry no it keeps me full and um Okay, so you yeah. feel full. That's pretty good. You yeah. don't want to eat breakfast and then feel hungry an hour later. Right. Good. Mm, so I, I don't really have a good scientific reason as to why I eat them, but... Okay. Uh, yeah, if, I mean, if there's reasons, just tell us. So that's... Yeah. And then do you have a snack or do you eat lunch? What time typically do you eat breakfast? So I eat breakfast around... It depends. So I've noticed... I don't know why this is, but I notice when I eat really early, mm -hmm. I'm really hungry throughout the day. And I don't know if that's because it kickstarts your metabolism, which might be a better thing, but for me, it causes problems. Mm. Like it makes me more hungry. What's really early? Like if I wake up at five. And you eat at five? If I eat at five a.m. As opposed to eating what would be a little later? or Nine. So nine works a little better for you than yeah, five. Yeah, right. Okay. So. I don't have an explanation for that, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And if I work out in that morning, then I'll have um, a, rec a recovery protein shake before. Like right when I get back. You'll from have my that run. before you work out, or you'll have that after. You after run. I work out, before I have breakfast. So like okay, if I so get sometimes up at five, you'll get up and run right. at five, mm -hmm. and then you get back, and before breakfast you'll have a shake. Yes. It's got protein. It's protein. It has like amino acids mm -hmm. and different things. Why in do it. you do that? What's the shake do for you? Uh, you know, to be honest, my running coach told me to do it. <laughs> and so, um, just to, so that the muscle doesn't break down, apparently. I just trust what she said. Yeah, the, I mean, the typical reason that we want to do protein, especially protein after you work out, is that there's this window where your muscles are breaking down and rebuilding, and they need, you know, amino acids, the building blocks of that. And so you want to get that in, at, you know, typically right when your workout's over. So what he said. Nice. So, yeah. And then I'll shower and I'll get ready for the day and then I'll have breakfast. And if I'm still full from the shake, I'll just have a smaller portion of breakfast. So let's say you have the shake and then how much later are you eating breakfast? 30 minutes, an hour? No, like an hour and a half. Okay, so that's a fair amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like you're eating the shake, you're drinking the shake and then 15 minutes later sitting down and having a breakfast. No, I don't like to get let myself get too full because then that's also, you, you kind of learn about yourself when you're doing this stuff. It's also yeah. a trigger when I feel over full for some reason it makes me want more food it makes no sense but when i feel um interesting like i've just okay. eaten enough um and i'm fueling my body versus yeah. like feeding myself um it, it's good so. good okay so you have the shake mm -hmm. maybe nine you're eating breakfast right we talked about it and then what's next lunch a snack i usually have a snack okay. i don't like to let myself get too hungry so you probably eat every three to four hours. At least. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes every two. Okay. Two and a half. No. Two might be a bit frequent, but we do recommend <laughs> eating every three to four hours. <laughs> if you're in marathon training, yeah. your rules are probably going to be a little different. You, if you're up, you're burning more calories right. running. You, what do you run? 70 miles a week right yeah, now? Yeah, like 50 to yeah, 50, 70, something like that. 70 sounds better, so we're going to stick 70, with that. 70, 100%. No, 50 to 70 a week. You're going to be able to burn some more calories, so you can eat more frequently. But yeah. I like, the, and you said this more than once, you don't like to let yourself get too hungry. What happens if you let yourself get too hungry? I make impulsive decisions. Yeah. I'm, you know, all of a sudden, like, this great meal that I've made for lunch doesn't look as good, and the pizza that people have in the kitchen looks amazing. But for me, I can feel it. Like, my adrenaline goes right. up, I start, I get stressed, I mm -hmm. get that panic, and then I will eat whatever is in front of me, yes. and most of the time it's crap, and I will eat more. Yes. 
So this three to four hour thing is really key. Key. It's great because you stay full mm -hmm. and you actually end up consuming more, less calories overall in a day than you do if you would only eat three meals a day or if you skip breakfast and just do right. lunch and dinner. So you're demonstrating that very well. You're an excellent model for that. Thanks. <laughs> Give a little pat on the back. Okay, so what do you have for a snack in the morning? What are your options? Um, let's see, recently I've been really into um, apples and almond butter. That's kind of my go-to. Okay. Um, so how do you eat almond butter? Like a spoon of it? You just kind of, you like mash it on the apple? I don't know what that's like. Yeah, I, so I'll cut up, um, I like to make little like snack pack type of things okay. for myself. Yeah. So that they're convenient, because that's the other thing. If it's not convenient, um, it's not going to happen. Totally. So. It's so funny how many, when we talk, talk to people about these little, these little things that don't, like, we always want to talk about car, low carb and low fat mm -hmm. and all of this, but like a lot of the successful skills or traits are, you know, like planning and preparation, Definitely. you know, making it convenient and easy and so that it works for your life, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, that's what people give up. It's a lot easier when people say they're going to lunch to go and, and go to lunch with a bunch of people that are not on the same path. I'm not saying that you can't go. I don't. You know, I don't want it to sound like no, 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 you're limited, no, no. no. You're, you're totally right, though. You know. It's just the, like the path of least resistance is to not prepare, to not take that effort right. to, you know, make your lunch and get your snacks lined up. Right. It's just easier, but it's, you know, in the overall, not as beneficial. Right. So almond butter and an apple. Anything else that you'll have for a mid-morning snack? Um, it just depends. Like sometimes I'll have if I don't didn't like cut up the apple, I'll bring a little thing of trail mix, and. You've given me some trail mix already. I have. Yeah, it works. I like, I like. I need to get more. You have. It sounds like you have more healthy fats in your diet than I do. Like, I need to get some more healthy fats in because they keep you fuller. They do, longer. and they're not so. You know, the low fat diet carb or low fat uh, fat cry, craze. Just or whatever what you're is, saying, yeah. Low fat whatever diet. Whatever I'm trying to say is, um, it's finally like coming to an end. You know, um, thank God, because that is not bad for you. It's I not. Don't think. No, it's no, 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 totally true. No, no, no. It's totally true. So you can, you can, you can do either. You can do a low-fat diet, and you, or you can do a low-carb diet. Those are kind of the two macronutrients that are opposed. There, most people tend to eat protein and a little bit more. But I'm finding in my own diet, like when I log it on my Fitness Pal, I tend to be really low-fat, and it's not as conscious. It's just like because I went to medical school in a time when you right. know Atkins was controversial and it hadn't had enough data. Well, this is 2000. What year are we in? It's 2015. It's been around for a while. We've had right. tons of studies that have said, you know what? People can can sustain weight loss in the long term in terms of heart disease and stroke and cancer and all this stuff. You're not, you know, if you go on a low carb diet, you're not going to end up with higher risk for that stuff. It'll even be lower than a regular diet. So it's a, it's a validated option, you know, from a medical science standpoint. So Okay, so those are your mid-morning snacks. How about lunch? Lunch is typically a big thing of veggies, whether it's a salad or just like I'll roast up some Brussels sprouts and green beans. That's what I was into last week. Uh -huh. um, or roasted squash or, you know, something. I just do, a, I am a creature of like, I like portions, you know. I like it to look pretty and I like to look big. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to like, be massive but pretty it, and big <laughs> so yeah. so you know I like to, I like my food to like look you know colorful Your food you like pretty and big yes my food I like pretty okay. and big and um Don't we and all. colorful that's another thing I like to do is like I like roasted I like bell peppers and and um squash and zucchini I like them for the color I think that are like it helps my brain <laughs> like see in color so I'll have that and then some kind of protein so it might be tuna, it might be um, chicken, it might be ground turkey, it might be fish. You I, know, love that you're, I love that you're throwing the protein in there with those veggies. The protein is the biggest thing. Totally. Why me. is it the biggest thing for you? It just keeps me full. It just... It keeps I, you full and you feel like you don't need to eat again as soon as right. if you didn't have it. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Totally. Because before it was like I used to always just eat pasta or whatever. Mm -hmm. And even though like I would attempt to eat healthy so I would have whole wheat pasta, yeah. but it was the portion. I was having portions for a whole family versus, <laughs> versus just me. And um, and I would be like, oh, I wonder why I'm getting away. But, you know, 
Do the do the gaining weight voice again for me. I don't know why I'm gaining weight. Is this like Britney like five years ago? <laughs> no, I had the same voice, but that's how I felt. <laughs> oh, that, that was a feeling, okay. That was a feeling voice. I like voice. that. Let's see if you pull that out again a little bit later. So you talk about portions. When you say pretty and big, <laughs> let's talk about portions for a little bit. When you're eating vegetables or a salad, make it as big as you want. Yeah. I've never heard somebody come in who's overweight and say, you know, Doc, I'm just eating too many damn vegetables. I'm eating right. too much healthy food, and that's why I'm overweight. Like right. it, it's most of the time we're eating too many chips and processed food and hot dogs and yeah. buns and pasta and all that. So uh, I think that's um, that's a little point. There was some other, something else I was going to say, but anyway, veggies and um, and protein. That sounds good. So you got a lot of different options for lunch. Mm -hmm. What time do you usually eat lunch? I usually eat pretty late lunch, like. Did you just ruin the recording <laughs> device? I may have. Well, I think there's a few things going on here now. We're back on. We're going to push pause for a moment while we... Uh... We're fine. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. We're just in the middle of the grass. Totally fine. We <laughs> definitely don't want you to stop and go slower because then that would take even more to ruin the recording Hey, we're on a low budget operation here. We don't exactly have control of your mind. This is true. Okay, so you eat a late lunch, like what time? Probably like 2 o'clock. Okay, and then afternoon snack, dinner, what, what's that looking like? Afternoon snack is usually like hummus. I really like roasted pepper hummus. Is that right? It's so good. I've seen that at the grocery store. I haven't ventured out much beyond the original yet. I'm a little, I'm kind of afraid of roasted uh, pepper. I like spicy things, so um, it's like the spicy whatever, jalapeno yeah. hummus too. It's really good. Okay. Um, I like that with celery. I really like celery. Yeah. I'm into celery. Um, but I've kind of dip, been dipping hummus with, hey guys. <laughs> um, it sounds terrible, but either broccoli or... No, uh, that sounds great. Asparagus. Asparagus is a little weird. I but know, but it just a little hummus and I can get anything down. It helps Ooh. me get more veggies. It's a challenge for me. Yeah. Okay, so that's your afternoon snack. Mm -hmm. Hummus has got, you know, some, some protein in there and a veggie. Again, Let's point out that protein in a, in a vegetable combo, which is excellent. And then what time are we talking about dinner on average? Dinner is tricky for me because I'm very busy at night. Um, I'm mean, busy during the day, I work full time, but um, I'm also- You're employed. I'm employed. Excellent. I don't just sit around thinking about- For those that wondered, employment- I do have a job. <laughs> yeah, she does have a job. <laughs> Today, <laughs> we'll see what happens tomorrow. But, um, so, yeah, lunch or dinner, I guess it's like the same thing. Um, protein, veggies. I what really... time? You said you're kind of flexible, you're yeah. busy. I don't know, just ballpark, like seven to eight, six, nine. I mean, what are you talking about? Eight ish. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll throw in a third snack, so. It makes sense. I just, you know, I, again, I don't like to get myself too hungry, but because I Because if you get hungry meals. and your body is giving you the message, hey, we need to eat, but mm -hmm. you're not ready for dinner. Then you throw in a healthy snack to hold you over. Right. Or I'll just have totally. like a, a half of my dinner. Sometimes my dinner, dinner is already made or um, I try to make things like in a batch so that they're ready mm -hmm. to go. Um, but Preparation, yeah. totally. So what kind of things for dinner? Dinner, again, like veggies and it sounds boring, but it's really not. If you go on Pinterest, there are a ton of healthy recipes. What do you follow on Pinterest for healthy recipes? Uh, not anything in particular. I'll just like check out like uh if i'm thinking you know i saw a vegetable i.e um spaghetti squash and i want to look up spaghetti squash i'll go on pinterest and there's tons of healthy options i'll just put in so healthy just spaghetti in, squash okay healthy spaghetti squash <laughs> or then even you'll just google like, that's yeah that's a good idea i might try that it's awesome pinterest they have so many and so i'll just do like spaghetti squash with um it seriously tastes just like uh, pasta if you no, I've done it. We've made it a couple times. Yeah. Add in marinara, and yeah. I've noticed if I let it sit in marinara, like if I make it for a couple days and let it sit in marinara, yeah. then it really takes on the flavor. Um, and then I'll add in a protein, chicken, yeah, totally. ground turkey, whatever. It, it's fun. I'm not, I mean, I did this like once. So you make this spaghetti squash thing, mm -hmm. you open it up, and it's like all stringy on the inside of this vegetable, and it's like spaghetti. Yeah. Except it's a vegetable, so it's not, you know, a more carby pasta that some people may want to avoid. Uh, yeah. Or I'll do like um, mushrooms. My daughter would like that. That's given me a good idea. Good recipe. Good, good recipe. It's a good one. I didn't think of it, but it's good. So let me ask you a couple more things and we'll wrap this one up. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you allow yourself a day off? Do you, do you have any cheats? Do you ever have sweets? What's your kind of thoughts on that? Um, I've noticed that with sugar, I'm, I, I don't really respond well to it. So I try not to do that, but I do make um, like homemade pop like homemade popsicles or homemade sorbet. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah, I, I'm a human. Like, I'm gonna crave sweets. I'm not this we like weren't sure for perfect while. structured person. And also too, sorry, rewinding really fast. It's okay. like I do add in like brown rice and stuff like that, especially when I'm marathon training. More like healthy carbs like that. Yeah, brown rice yeah. or quinoa. Um, those Green, are my two staples yeah. that I go to. Yeah. Just as a side note. Cause yeah. When a lot of people running, like brown rice. Lot, yeah, for sure. It's kind of important. Um, energy, yeah. No, you just you have an increased energy requirement, and and especially rice is an excellent source of that. Definitely. So I'm um, going back to allowing myself to have treats or whatever. Um, I try to, you know, make things. I'll make a. Okay, so like I really like green tea ice cream. Mm -hmm. If you get a banana and you freeze it, and then um, right before you want to make this ice cream, green tea ice cream, you take out the banana and just um, let it thaw a little bit. Okay. And then I have like a hand blender. Yeah. Um, and I'll mash it up and then I'll add in like maybe a little bit of almond milk to help it. Yeah. Um, and then I add in matcha powder. Mm -hmm. And it, the banana completely takes on the green tea flavor. Mm. And it tastes like green tea ice cream. Matcha powder? Yeah. What's matcha? Matcha. It's like, it's green, but don't Does everybody eat, else know what that is? I don't know what that don't is. Don't eat that at matcha night. Matcha powder? Because it's, it's green tea and powder form. That's like powdered green tea. So banana, matcha powder, and some a almond milk. A tiny bit of almond milk. And that's like, oh, that's like a healthy dessert. Look at this, another little dessert I might try. I mean, but another recipe I might try. You, so you can also do that with cacao powder. Get raw cacao powder, it's like chocolate. No? Is that like cocoa powder, like cacao? Yeah, but I supposedly, I don't really know why it's better, but someone told me it was, <laughs> I listened to them. And then I'll take like some, um, take some dried unsweetened coconut and sprinkle it on top. But the matcha powder don't drink, don't have that at night. Because Another it, one not to have at night. No, don't have it at night because it's like I'll sometimes put it in my protein shake or I'll do it midday because um, it's green tea and it's like a really intense. Got form. some caffeine or something. Yeah, and it definitely helps you up. So there good. are tons of options. Well, this has been a good intro chat. I'm sure we'll talk more about this stuff. I'm Let's sure talk. What are we going to talk about next? Exercise. Exercise. Should you lift? Should chicks lift weights? <laughs> and get bulky. Do you have to get bulky by lifting weights? I don't know, we'll see. We'll see.